Well, thank you, Mr. <coughs> Chairman. I'd like to join you in welcoming uh, our Comptroller General, Gene Dodaro, to uh, today's uh, hearing. Mr. Dodaro, uh, thank you for joining us and uh, for all of the hard work of the men and women that are part of uh, the GAO. Uh, you work uh, very hard to hold uh, federal government accountable and to ensure that taxpayer dollars are being spent uh, appropriately. And, and as always, I look forward to your testimony uh, here today. Since 1990, the GAO has alerted Congress to areas that are considered high risk by providing this list of federal agencies and programs that they have identified as vulnerable to fraud, waste, abuse, or mismanagement. The high risk list is a, is a roadmap to cut waste, to save taxpayer dollars, and set our country on a course for a more fiscally responsible future. Uh, yet federal agencies in Congress have struggled to effectively address many of the problems that are identified uh, in this report. And I, I believe that this failure is rooted in the dysfunctional budgeting and appropriations process that has filled with last-minute deadlines, continuing resolutions, and brinksmanship that leads to government shutdowns. Instead of thoroughly examining whether the programs we authorize and funds are serving the American people effectively, Congress routinely relies on stopgap spending measures and continuing resolutions that disrupt the regular order and really don't allow for meaningful oversight uh, of taxpayer dollars. This leads to governmental short-termism. Too often we spend more money to lease office space over years or decades than it would cost to build and own that uh, property. Uh, we didn't invest effectively in federal cybersecurity, and we're now paying for credit monitoring for over 20 million people in wake of the OPM breach. Efforts we make now to prepare for and mitigate climate change could also save the federal government, farmers, homeowners, and small businesses billions of dollars in the coming years. The federal government is also dragging its heels in addressing toxic chemicals. The sooner EPA and other agencies act to address PFAS, fluorinated chemicals that are harmful to human health, the more money we can save on billions of dollars of future cleanups and health care costs. This pattern of waste and delay is particularly alarming at a time when our country is on course to reach a $1 trillion deficit uh, in the fiscal year coming up. Taxpayers in Michigan and across this country certainly deserve a whole lot better, and we simply can't afford to continue down this same path. As members of Congress, it's our duty to, race, uh, to root out uh, waste and ensure that government is being held accountable to taxpayers. Uh, we must fulfill our obligation to conduct rigorous uh, oversight and craft bipartisan, common-sense reforms to strengthen the programs that Americans have come to count on. And we must also look for smart ways to cut spending and save tax uh, dollars, such as eliminating duplicative or overlapping efforts to end, that end up costing us a whole lot more in the long run. So I appreciated the opportunity to work with my colleagues, uh, Senators Paul and Langford, to enact legislation to increase government efficiency last Congress. I also look forward to reviewing Senator Langford's waste report and finding new areas to work in a bipartisan way with Chairman Johnson and members of this committee to make our government function better. We must make real progress on these goals starting uh, with today's hearings. By examining the areas of concerns raised in today's hearings, uh, we can focus on providing the proper funding and oversight of federal programs that will enable us to rein in spending, reduce waste, and provide greater accountability for the American people. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I uh, look forward to the discussion.